guys, welcome to Simproved. Fry speaking here, and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. Today, we are going to build a Viking farm as part of our little Viking village series where we will transform Granite Falls from the outdoor retreat pack into a little Viking village. And yeah, I want your Sims to be able to do a little bit of time traveling. Especially since we don't have a medieval pack yet in The Sims 4. I don't know if it will ever come out, but I'm super excited if it does. And yeah, I'm just super into these kinds of builds at the moment. And uh, this is the Viking farm we all discussed. Yeah, we have a couple of, I think, one lot left. Yeah, you, you see it on the screen. And I think then I will share the save file with you. I have the create a world mod as well so we could even try to make this like a real world where there is no you know trace of civilization i would say left you know no electrical wiring well especially lamps i think we have here in the world etc to really make this look like a medieval kind of viking world you know so yeah the Viking farm. So since we have cottage living, I decided that it would be really great to have a little farm kind of thing. Gardening is a thing we have in the game since base game, of course, but also adding like a cow and maybe some chickens, etc. I thought that would be interesting. And we go with the longhouse again. I looked up some yeah farm houses and how they are structured and apparently i mean that also makes quite lots of sense they have sometimes the animal inside as well in the back of the building and i really really loved that idea i thought okay we can put like a cow in there as well the cow in the sims 4 cottage living is only accessible if you have their shed they are tied to an object uh, which is like this big shed so we have to make it smaller but it will work as well <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we will ha get in some trouble with that later with the chat. Keep that in mind. Anyways, I started with the longhouse and like have a little side, side house, side annex there as well, which usually was used as storage or for the latrine and stuff like that. As always with these kinds of builds, guys, we have the problem of not having a medieval pack. And since then, we don't also have anything that would help the medieval gameplay because you need of course something like a toilet but we don't have a chamber pot we don't have a latrine we don't have any beds that look kind of medieval so uh, yeah i love these kinds of builds because they're actually really challenging even with all of the packs we don't have that many objects that would fit the theme here you know kind of challenging myself with uh, stuff like this and it's just the theme in general is just uh, it looks so pretty it's like straight out of a disney movie kind of you know i really love how it turned out so yeah as always we have lots of fun with roofs as you can see i say fun maybe sometimes this is uh, an understatement but you know what i mean so i stack lots and lots of different roofs with different trims over one another to give it that look that they actually have and underbuilt made out of beams and diagonal beams etc which they would use in a you know built like that back in the days also keep in mind i'm like not an historian in all just like anything i just watched lots and lots of documentaries and stuff like that and looked up how some of the still existing longhouses or rebuilt longhouses uh, look like with lots of research, etc. You know, definitely in the end, we go a little bit more fantasy here. So we use a little bit of reality because I wanted to have lots and lots of representation of spring and like harvest in there. So we have lots of greenery inside as well. And usually these houses are very dark because, you know, um, you don't build that many windows, etc. Because they're, first of all, I guess, a static weak point and also the heat and all of the warmth will go out through the rooftop there, especially the smoke of the fireplace in the middle. So yeah, you don't necessarily need a window, but I will play some windows because um, <clears throat> yeah, that's the, that's the fairy tale part of this whole thing. Anyways, I think it looks really, really cool and it's definitely absolutely playable you don't need any cc for that but i kept the freedom of using all of the packs i have i really didn't look at anything at all to make this you know kind of 
more realistic because then I would have to provide lots of mods and uh, lists of CC etc which is the reason why I never built with CC it's just not viable in my opinion and I want lots of people to be able to download this so uh, yeah here we go guys this is the reason I know some of you ask but yeah all of my builds are CC free rarely the mods I use are just for me either making it easier to build because there are like some cheats in place that make it easier to find stuff and sort through stuff or to record these kinds of videos that's basically it i'm not a big game player so uh building is basically all i do in the sims mostly and yeah i just thought let's see how cottage living you know, ties into the whole Viking farm experience here. And it goes really well because lots of the cottage living stuff is either kind of medieval-y or can be used as like a medieval thing because there's like no, like I already said, like ele electricity kind of tied to it. Lots of the things are off the grid. And the farm objects definitely, you know, also fit a medieval kind of Viking farm as well. Um, the only thing that I kind of don't like is how the coop the chicken coop looks like it's still a little bit too industrial looking if it makes sense like industrial wood uh, like wooden beams and stuff like that i use it doesn't look that handmade maybe but yeah like i said all the animals are mostly tied to objects and yeah it's it's always making it a little bit hard but i definitely needed to have some objects in the game you know some animals in the game so we can uh, have them here in our farm and i really like the whole idea of having a build that has animals and farming so to speak so there are like little round gardens that are around it and your sims can actually really use it and plant some crops there so that really works and also they have the yield i would say from the animals <laughs> so um yeah this is basically how apparently vikings lived as well so they had their animals in the house as well they probably could put the animals outside as well but you know what i mean i really like the whole idea architecture wise and planning wise of this build where to put the animals so that was really really interesting and also i think it looks so cute it's cute that you have like lots of animals on your build or like on in, in your house around on the lots because it definitely immediately gives you like some lift in feel you know as some living object <laughs> we'll just call it living character living there with you and yeah for me as a builder who is rarely in life mode it kind of gives you this ah oh, it's so cute there are lots and lots of animals all around it's kind of like lived in more now because i'm always in pause mode you know building basically just cluttered everything outside uh the coal or what is it it's a coal yeah i think it's coal or something this is a debug object so your sims can plant their crops on top of it they have a really really small footprint so it all works fine i trusted it but if you run into any problems i will also provide you with as you can see lots and lots of planters that i sometimes will also put some debug stuff in so they are looking used so here we are on the inside and in the interior we had this problem with a shed as you can see it's huge and i had to make it small 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 and put it into a debug bucket because you still have to be able in gameplay to reach the shed as it is the interaction kind of shed for for the animal so you can click on the animal but to get the animal you have to fill the shed and click on it so the debug bucket is the only you know way to hide it kinda but i still want you to be able to find the shed object even though it's really small and then you can click on it and fill it or i don't know fill the fill the food of the cow or llama i think you can also have a llama with that shed and, and so on but yeah after that everything works fine you can click on the cow and it's happy and uh, i play tested it but it is so huge this is why this whole long house is not very symmetrical because uh, yeah, the animals have to be in the back and the hearth is usually absolutely in the middle. This time it is on the first third, I would say, of the house. But yeah, next to the hearth and the, like the fireplace I put in the middle, there are of course the beds because that's the warmest spot and that's where you would usually, you know, sleep. 
and we don't have that many kind of Vikingy objects. I didn't want to use that, like I said, industrial wood. And lots of the objects are definitely something where you would need like a sawmill and stuff like that. That's something that is kind of a little bit too sophisticated. So what I use is a lot, lots of plants and herb racks and stuff like that. I was like, okay, that kind of fits, you know a whole viking farm kind of feel. So we have lots and lots of plants everywhere. The lamps are usually kind of candles or I also will use some ceiling lights. I think these are from Cats and Dogs. That kind of look like pumpkins, some sort of exotic pumpkins. And I thought, okay, maybe these lanterns, you know, they made themselves. They don't look like they have electrical wiring, but we definitely need ceiling lamps that are, uh, how can I say this, small, but still with candles, like candles, candles, and then also no glass, etc. Because lots of the chandeliers have like glasses around their candles. And I didn't want to use glass that much. I was like, glass is probably a little bit too sophisticated here. So yeah, these are like all the little restrictions I ran into or that I put on myself and I ran it to while I was building this and furnishing this. But yeah, there's everything your Sims needs. They can sleep in the baths, they can make their food on the fireplace, campfire in the middle. So, you know, food and sleep is all the good here. They will pee in the bushes that I will put outside. There are the poohoo bushes or the sex bushes, how I call them, outside. They can also sleep in these bushes. I love them. I have used them vigorously in all of these medieval kind of builds. So yeah, bladder is good. The, the you know, hygiene, they have to swim somewhere. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> but um, yeah, basically all of the basics are covered here. And this is fully playable as a Viking farm. If you so want to play with Vikings or, you know, anything I would say medieval here. Because of course um, there will be some errors. But I would be really interested in some of the Nordics maybe here call me out. I'm always eager to learn anything about this. Sometimes it's hard to find stuff that is either in German, English, or maybe Spanish. And then I think we, I'm, I'm at the end of my, you know, what I can do, <laughs> what I can speak. Anyways, lots and lots of hay balls are there. There are some uh, barrels, lots of barrels. I use them in all of my builds almost. Um, the cow is quite happy. I play tested this vigorously and up to, I mean, because of the bushes, you can even have up to eight sims living in here, but I would just strongly suggest having four or three. But that's just me. That's just me. I'm really bad at gameplay with when it comes to more than two sims. I'm totally freaked out. I'm like, well, where are you going? Oh no, and she's doing that and he's doing that and they are doing this now and everyone is doing different stuff. Everyone is complaining because they. Ugh, I'm just bad at this. So yeah, usually I'm super annoyed, stressed out and I'm like, I'm going to my build mode where there's cozy music and it's chilling vibes and stuff. And uh, yeah, it just makes me way more happy than playing the game. So yeah. Yeah, that's basically it, guys. I really, really hope that you love this build. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment what the next lot for the Viking Village should be. I was thinking blacksmith, but I really have to see what I can do here because we don't have any smithy kind of objects, you know. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below because you're part of the Viking Village uh, as well, of course. That's basically it, guys. I really hope that you like it. Enjoy the video tour now and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.